Alrighty, Warner Brothers Animation has come out with yet another entry in their long line of DC animated movies. How many does that make now? Mm-hmm. And how many of them feature Batman? Yeah. Favoritism is clearly not limited to the live-action films. However, before the Dark Knight can take on the Man of Steel, he has to contend with his rebellious young ward. This is Batman vs. Robin. I want a Robin signal in the sky, all right? I'm tired of living in your shadow. It's Batman and Robin, not Robin and Batman. Following up on the decent son of Batman, the story involves the caped crusader fighting crime with the aid of his son Damien, the newest Robin. Years prior, Batman inadvertently conceived Damien with Talia al Ghul, who had trained him to be the head of the League of Assassins. Now that the Dark Knight has custody, he struggles to rid Damien of his killer instinct while trying to provide for him as a father. However, their tense relationship is tested by the emergence of a new group of vigilantes known as the Court of Owls, who have grand plans for Gotham and exercise their own brand of justice by ruthlessly executing anyone who stands in their way. As you can probably tell by that synopsis, there are ample opportunities here to deepen the characters from the previous film. This is actually one of the areas where this one works the most. A lot of time is devoted to developing the relationship between Bruce and Damien. It's interesting to see Batman, who normally has everything planned out and is one step ahead of everyone, struggle with the unfamiliar concept of raising a kid, especially one as abnormal as Damien. He doesn't have a clear-cut answer of what to do, so the situation proves to be as much of a learning experience for him as it is for his son. Additionally, Damien begins to drop his guard a little more taking an interest in books and other activities while grappling with whether or not to fully accept Bruce as his father. The intriguing material is conveyed well by the performances. It seems like Jason O'Mara is becoming Warner's go-to guy for voicing Batman, which is fine by me. Yeah, no one competes with Kevin Conroy, but O'Mara still inhabits the role increasingly well. He gets to play more with the dual identity aspect this time around remaining thoughtful and understated as Bruce Wayne while sharp and mysterious as Batman. In conjunction, Stuart Allen is a bit more nuanced as Damien this time, not yelling as often and sounding more natural in the role. Although, having previously mentioned Kevin Conroy, I've gotta say it was kinda weird hearing him as Thomas Wayne in a flashback, almost like a seal of approval or a passing of the torch. Speaking of Thomas Wayne, the connection that the Court of Owls has to Bruce's past is a good way of adding some thematic weight to their conflict with Batman and manipulation of Damien. In conjunction, they lend themselves to a handful of eerie scenes. Unfortunately, when we actually see them, they seem like pretty bland bad guys. Like the poor man's League of Assassins. However, as the movie goes on and more secrets are revealed, they do contribute to some decent drama and conflict. Most of this has to do with the character of Talon, voiced by Jeremy Sisto, who also voiced Batman at one point. What is this, a reunion? Anyway, he's manipulative, sure, but he also lends a humanity and an emotional uncertainty that add dimension to his character. The supporting cast also does a good job. Sean Mayer as Nightwing is not as much of a moron as he was in the first film, offering experience and moral support rather than being constantly made a fool of. As Alfred, we have the man from Uncle Star, David McCallum, providing fatherly wisdom and a genuine gentleness that perfectly fit the character. Of course, we have voice acting veterans like Robin Atkin Downs and Gray Delisle, oh I'm sorry, Gray Griffin, in supporting roles. And their expertise shines through in their adept deliveries. Finally, Weird Al Yankovic has a surprisingly creepy cameo as the doll maker. Without giving too much away, all I'll say is that the character is much more effective here than he was on Gotham, which is really sad when you think about it. What isn't sad is the violence. Most of the action scenes are pretty hard hitting, thanks in no small part to Frederick Weidman's energetic musical score and the exemplary animation. The fluidity of the combat scenes still manages to impress, maintaining the high standards of previous entries and making a convincing case for 2D animation in a 3D age. It's made all the more meaningful due to the film's pacing, moving the story along at a steady rate while spacing the action sequences out so as not to overshadow the narrative. The only time when the movie falters in this is at the climax, 
during which certain character motivations are undermined and the plot starts to crumble somewhat. In addition, the resolution feels a little rushed in comparison to everything else. In spite of that, Batman vs. Robin is an improvement over its predecessor. The story is more character driven, the voice acting is well done, and the animation is as accomplished as you'd expect. Although it doesn't quite reach the greatness of some of the other direct-to-video DC flicks, it's still effective enough to warrant a watch.